Good morning, church. Actually, this morning, or rather since yesterday, I was not feeling very well. Uh, <clears throat> a flu was coming upon me. And uh, after taking some medicine, I thought this morning I'll be all right. But then, uh, as I had my breakfast, after I had my breakfast, I realized that the, the flu is coming back. So I have to take medicine. And after taking the medicine, now I'm feeling a bit blur. <laughs> <laughs> so I was rather worried I said, oh God, I need to preach So I hope, I hope that uh, you excuse me If I'm saying something else uh, after this. <laughs> But I also thank God that uh, As the communion was passed just now I was praying And uh, after I took the communion uh, I felt much better Amen And I believe that Yeah, amen And I believe that as I preach As I share the word I will preach myself to health. Amen? And I believe that this is going to be the best sermon ever. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> because the Bible says that when I'm weak, He is strong in me. Amen? And that His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. So this morning, we're going to continue with our series on the statement of Jesus as re he revealed himself to us as the great I am. And because my topic this morning, I think I'll be rather slow. At least. <laughs> so I'll take a, this is going to be a long sermon. Bear with me. <laughs> okay. Now, we have gone through a few uh, sermons in the last few months, or rather few Sundays, uh, as to what Jesus said about himself as the I am, right? And this morning, I'll be taking you through another statement that came right after Jesus said that he's the gate. So today, he said to us that he's the good shepherd. Now, we realize from the Bible that the the name of God that was first revealed to us. He revealed his name to Moses. Is it working? Sorry. Is it working? Not working. Okay. He re God revealed his name as the I am, first and foremost to Moses when Moses was asked to go into Egypt to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt. And he was very afraid. And he felt there was, he has no confidence because he said, who, who am I? Right? Because he was a fugitive. Even though he was once a prince of Egypt, but because he killed somebody and then he ran away. We know the story. And then he was living in the desert and that was a very humbling experience. Right? And that was a time that God find that after he was humbled for 40 years, it was the right time for him to be called. And Moses was called out of the desert back into Egypt to deliver God's people. Of course, he was very afraid and he was also very worried. And he was wondering, what am I supposed to tell the children of Israel, right? Who actually sent me? You told me that you are the God of you know, our forefathers. But what is your name? He, he asked God. And we realize in Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, God revealed himself to, to Moses as the great I am. He said, I am. Sup no, he asked God, God uh, Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your father has sent me. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I say? Is this thing working? Okay. okay. Then God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. And it stops there. And it stops there. God's name was I am. But there was no other revelation about what that actually means. Right? So what Moses got, was, got, got from God was, God's name is I am. That's it. Full stop. Of course, he didn't ask further. And God also didn't reveal further. And that was in the Old Testament. All right, before Jesus came to reveal to us who actually God is. 
So that was the time of the shadow, we call it, right, in the Old Testament. But when Jesus came, this thing is really not okay. Okay, when Jesus came, he told us in John chapter 8, 58, Verily I tell you, Jesus answered, Before Abraham was, I am. In other words, God actually, I mean, Jesus actually identified him, himself with God. That was the name that God used. That was the name that God actually revealed to Moses. But Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. And you know that when he said that, the Jews at, the time, at his time, and especially the Pharisees, they were very furious. Because they know that Jesus was actually identified himself with God. In other words, he is telling them, if you want to know God, I am. And it was very shocking, right? And we know that from scriptures, from the gospel in John, Jesus revealed to us who actually God is. When the substance comes, we know what is the real meaning of the name of God, I am. He told us that I am the bread, right? I am the bread of life. That was what he told us. So when you are hungry, when you have needs and you have pro you, you need of provision, Jesus is the bread of life to us. He is the light of the world. When we are in darkness, He is the light. Amen. And then He is the gate. When we need to find a way through in our life, understand this, beloved of God, He is the gate. He is your door. When you enter through Him, you will receive salvation. Amen. And he, he also revealed to us that He is the resurrection and the life. So in other words, we can no longer die. Those who entered through the gate will no longer die because He has died our death. Amen? And He's also the way, the truth, and the life. And He is the wine. And today, we want to look into uh, another truth where Jesus revealed to us in John chapter 10, verse 11, that He is the Good Shepherd. Amen? Now, this is the picture of a shepherd and their sheep. There's one thing about this shepherd, you see, there's only one shepherd and all the sheep follow him. And there is, there's a reason why God uses this analogy. In other words, telling us that we are like sheep. Alright? So, as we go through uh, John chapter 10, verse 11 onwards, you begin to see what it actually means, why God actually says that we are sheep. Alright? And not something else. Now, King David, one of the most beloved saints of the Old Testament, he had a revelation of God being a shepherd, right? He has a revelation. He wrote the famous Psalms 23. He said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall neck nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for His namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You are not my head with oil, my cup overflows. And last but not least, surely God's goodness and God's love will follow us all the day of our life and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. So, David, King David, or the prophet David, as they want to call him, all right, has a revelation of God being a shepherd. He has a revelation of God being the provider. There's nothing that we will lack when we follow him. And he also has a revelation of God being a protector. He will protect us. Though we walk through the shadow of the valley of death, he is still there to protect us. And he has a he also has a revelation of God being the guide. He will guide us. And at the end of the day, there's only goodness. There's only mercy. There's only love. That's the result when we follow Jesus. But his revelation or his understanding of God being a shepherd is still very limited in his times. That's why he can only see God as a provider, as a protector, as a guide. Those are all good. And we know God as, as such as well yeah, today. 
But when Jesus came, he told the people, I'm not just a shepherd, you know, I'm a good shepherd. Now, that is something that David actually didn't see. And probably that's why he didn't even write in Psalms 23. And why is Jesus a good shepherd? Jesus told us that he is a good shepherd because he laid down his life for his sheep. Amen? Now, if David would have seen that, I'm sure he would have written that down. That the Lord is not just my shepherd, but he's a good shepherd because he gave his life for his sheep. But we thank God today that when Jesus came, he revealed to us something more. Because when he came, he knew that his mission was not just to provide for us, nor to protect us, nor to guide us, but he was prepared to lay down his life for us. So what we have today, church, is not just provision, it's not just guidance, it's not just protection. Today we have more than that. You know what we have? We have his life. We have his life. I don't know how you see this, but this is unbelievably great. <laughs> I don't know how to choose the word. You know, I'm happy if God provides for me. Amen? I'm sure you are. If God says, no, I'll protect you, Winston, oh, I'm very happy. I'm, I'm so assured that nothing will come, bad will come on me in that sense. Even if they come, you know, the Lord is there to protect me. And I, I shall not fear any evil nor harm. And I would also be very happy if I know that God is my guide. He guides me all the way. And that is so true. The Holy Spirit says He's our guide. He's our teacher. But more than that, today, we realize that that was something more that God has given, given to us. Yeah? He gave Himself. That's why Jesus said, you know, hardly any person would want to give Himself to anybody. Yeah? Perhaps, you know, if the person is good enough, he will lay down his life. But I don't think any of us here today are prepared to lay down our life for anybody, right? <laughs> yeah, sometimes we have to think very hard about that. But God loves us so much that He will lay down His life. Okay, the question next is why? Why would the Almighty God, who is so powerful, why would He want to lay down His life for His sheep? Yes, we know that the answer is love. But more than that, Jesus actually explained to us further because we belong to Him. We are His. Does anybody look like that? I hope we do, you know, because God calls us sheep. <laughs> Such a cute, handsome sheep. You know, when I look at that picture, I feel with love, you know. <laughs> it's just so cute, right? And Jesus told us in John chapter 10, verses 12 to 13, as he explained to us why he would lay down his life for us. He said, the higher hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Natural, lah, right? Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a higher man, higher hand and cares nothing for the sheep. So the first thing is, the Lord tells us we belong to Him because He made us. And because of that, He cares for us. He's not a hired man. He's not somebody that when the wolf come and attack or when your life is full of problems, He will run away. No, He will be there. This is an assurance for us that whenever we are in trouble, when we, whenever we find ourselves in circumstances where we do not know what to do. We are full of worries and fear. Uh, that's where the shepherd is, the good shepherd is. This is because the sheep are defenseless. You know, sheep, I mean, many animals in the animal kingdom, they have defense mechanism naturally, right? If they've been attacked, Either they have very sharp teeth 
or they have very sharp claw, or they have certain things to uh, defend themselves. But if you know of sheep, they have nothing to defend themselves. They don't even have sharp teeth. And if you look at their hoof, it's basically worthless to defend themselves. And they, are, they cannot run very fast as well, right? They, are, they look very fat. Actually, it's because of the fur, you know? So they are, they are quite heavy. So they can't run also. So they are defenseless. So that's how God looks at us. That's how He's trying to tell us that we need Him. Sometimes we think that we can defend ourselves. Oh, when trouble comes, oh, I'm great enough. I can defend myself because of my experience. No, I have enough experience. Sometimes the, loader, the older we get, huh, we tend to think like that. Huh? Because of experience, so I can handle this. And some, you know, the more we, we are, the more we, 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 what you call that, more educated, we also think like that. Because of education, I can defend myself. When I'm in trouble, I know what to do. But most of the time, our experience and education not just does not really help. It gets us into trouble. Yeah? And I myself face that kind of problem as well. But when I first came out into practice and then set up my own business, <coughs> I think I was more humble then, you know, in the sense. You know, as I, as I had more experience in, in years and you know, in my practice as a lawyer, sometimes I think that I know a lot. Yeah? And I find that sometimes I got into trouble because of that. I think I know, but actually I don't know. And I realized that I, I, I need God. Yeah? I need God and we must understand how God sees us so that then we will realize there's a need for Him to be, to be the shepherd in our life. God sees us as defenseless and He's the only one who can defend us. And another characteristic of the sheep is that the sheep is a very picky eater. I don't know whether you know about this. All right? They only choose the best grass to eat. Okay? They don't simply eat anything that you give them. They are not pandaraya. <laughs> okay, for those who does not understand, that means the city hall who collect garbage. All right? You see, contrasting a sheep with a goat, huh? do you know goats? Goats normally eat anything. Yeah, whatever they find, they will eat. That's why the Bible never identifies us as goats. In fact, the Bible uses goat to identify people who rejected God, who does not need God. But the sheep is different. The sheep, the sheep will choose the best. That's why the Bible says in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me to green pastures. They are not just pastures, you know. The shepherd knows what the sheep needs. They are green pastures. The, the, the shepherd will not lead the sheep to some dry pastures. It is green. That means fresh pastures. And today we are here this morning to receive that green pastures. When you hear the word, the Lord gives you fresh revelation of who it is. And you and I are receiving that green pastures for ourselves. Amen? So, we must understand firstly how God sees us in order for us to realize how much we actually need Him. So we are owned by the Lord. We are His. So that's why He was so willing to give His life for us. And next, we have a relationship with the Lord. This is what Jesus said in John 10, 14 to 12. I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. I'm sure you're asking now, oh, yeah, God knows me, but do I know Him? <laughs> I think many of times we think that we do not really know God. Am I right? Yes, the Lord knows me, but do I know God? But this is a statement that Jesus made. This is the truth. He said that, I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Then verse 16, in fact, <clears throat> he said, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. 
I believe he's referring to the Gentiles. Yeah, that he will call according to the gospel. And all of us, Gentiles and Jews alike, we will become one flock, having one shepherd. Amen? And not just we can know God, but we can also listen to his voice. In other words, we can actually hear God. Do you believe that? Yeah, we can hear God. If we are his sheep, then we will know his voice. You know something about sheep. Uh, if, you, if you know, you know, uh, last time I saw a, a, a video about, about sheep and shepherd. You know? And there were two shepherds having two different flocks. Yeah, two shepherds. They came good, together, you know, all eating grass. So the shepherd was talking to each other, you know, having a chit chat. So after they finished talking, so the shepherd left, one of them left. And the moment he left, he just called his sheep, you know, come, follow me. And what happened? Even though all the sheep were actually mixed together, the two shepherd's sheep, uh, that belong, one belonged to one shepherd, the other belonged to the other. But when this shepherd calls his own sheep, somehow they recognize his voice. And they would just separate themselves, you know. Those who belong to this shepherd will follow that shepherd's voice. It's amazing. How they know? How they know who's, who's right? Wait, how they recognize who's his shepherd? But they do. And they recognize the voice of their own shepherd. And so likewise, we as believers will recognize the voice of God. When God speaks, we know it's Him. It's not just because He's our shepherd, but because He's also our Father. All of us would recognize our own Father's voice. Am I right? When we are young, you know, our Father's causes, calls our name, most of the time it's not for good reasons sometimes, you know, <laughs> because we are naughty. <laughs> then our name has been, you know, called very loudly, you know. Oh, Ken Wai, you know, that's my, that's my name, <laughs> not Vincent, you know. When my name is called normally, most of the time it's not good, lah. you've been naughty, so your name has been called. My mom called my name, then something is wrong, okay? So, God is our Father, and we recognize His voice. We can know God, and some of us are still struggling in that area. Sometimes we don't understand or cannot recognize the voice of God. Is that God, or is that somebody else? Now, the problem comes because I believe we do not spend enough time with the Lord. Because, the, because Jesus said, His sheep knows His voice. And before that, He said, My sheep knows me. So in order to recognize the voice of the Lord, we must first get to know Him. Am I right? You must know Him. So let me encourage you, brother and sister, to get to know Jesus, to spend time with Him in His Word. In the morning when you're driving, you know, in the heavy traffic jam, do not get upset. That is the time for you to listen to a good sermon. That's the time for you to actually listen to some worship song and praise Him. Get to know Him. That is the time when you can talk to Him while you're driving. Don't talk to the f someone else over the phone, you know. <laughs> but talk to the Lord. And those are the best times. In fact, sometimes I thank God for the traffic. Because those are the most fruitful times. Do not look at traffic as something that's bad. You know, oh yeah, I need to rush here, right there. In fact, I realize that when I am so upset with the traffic, it, it actually spoils my day. But when I use those times to get to know the Lord, it is such best time. And the day just flow by. You know? having all that you set out to do completed. And that's how Psalms 23 comes into play. When you know the shepherd, you somehow listen to his voice, you will find him to be a shepherd in your life. He will guide you, he will lead you in all that you need to do. Last but not least is because of love. All right, John chapter 10, verse 17 to 18. The Lord told us that He owns us. Before that, He owns us. He has a relationship with us. And it is because of love. 
Yeah. The reason my father loved me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it away from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up. This command I received from my father. We are his sheep and he lays down his life for us because he loves his sheep. This morning, I want to repeat this again to us. Yeah, there's nothing, it's not enough for us to begin to realize more and more of how much God loves us. How much Jesus loves us. That he was even willing to give his life down, to lay down his life. He told us in this verse that nobody actually killed him. Nobody actually forced him to, to give up his life. But he gave up his life willingly for us. Amen. He gave up his life because he loved us. He gave up his life because he wants us to know God. He wants us to know him as the shepherd. He gave up his life because he wants us to realize that we belong to him. He gave up his life he wants, because he wants us to know that we can have a close relationship with God. We do not need to be apart from God. We do not need to be feeling far away from Him, but that we, are, we can be as close as He in you and you in Him. Amen? That's what the Bible revealed to us, that today, whoever who is in Christ, the Holy Spirit of God lives in you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's how close God is with you. And that was only possible because Jesus laid down his life on the cross. Amen? So that today we can have a relationship that is so close, so much so that God lives in us. Wow, that is powerful. That truth should set us free knowing that there's so much we can achieve in this life that God gave to us. There's so much. There was a life exchange. In John, 1 John 5, 11, this is what the Apostle John wrote for us. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life and this life is in His Son. So when Jesus laid down His life, his life was not gone, you know. It was not like, oh, you know, it just disappeared. Or it amounts to nothing. But we know from Scripture that Jesus was raised from the dead. Right? He overcame death and sin, and He was raised from the dead, so that today, you and I have His life. The Bible tells us that when Jesus gave up His life, God purposed purpose that uh, when Jesus gave up his life God purposed it so that we can have the life of his son amen and what do what does it actually mean what does it actually mean what do we mean that we have the life of Jesus and we want to go through some scriptures very fast and there are seven scriptures that I have discovered that talks about the life of Christ in us. I hope today that we will receive this truth into our life and then we will realize who we are in Christ. Who we are in Christ. If you realize who we are in Christ, it will change your life. It will definitely change your life. We say, we, we read from John 3, 16 that God so loved the world, whosoever believe in Him have eternal life. And most of the time we think that that is everlasting life. We think that that is the life where we will live in heaven, right? Uh, we will live forever. But that is only one small part of what eternal life is all about. So in 1 John 5, 11, the scripture revealed to us that eternal life is actually life in His Son. We have that life. So today, you and I have eternal life. You don't have to wait for heaven. Amen? You and I are experiencing eternal life right now, right here. But the thing is this. 
you must also, also understand what does it actually mean. What does eternal life amounts to? All right? First thing is that we have a new life, the Bible says. In Romans chapter, four, uh, chapter 6, verse 4. We were therefore buried with Him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may have a... We too may have a... New life. Today, you and I have a new life. Amen? It's not the old, but the new life. Okay, what's so new about this new life? You want to know, right? The Bible tells us the old has gone, the new has come. We are a new creation. So the moment you receive Jesus into your life, the Bible says you are born again, and therefore now you have a new life. Amen? So what is this new life? This new life is dependent on the Lord. The Apostle Paul wrote for us that the life he has today in the body, he realized one truth. The first thing is that he said, we have been crucified with Christ. He no longer lives. So likewise, today we no longer live. Get this into our spirit. We have been crucified with Christ. We no longer live. Sometimes, in fact, many a times, we still think that we are the old man. We still think that we are the old creation. Even though we have been reborn, we still think that we are still the old one because we see many things similar. Same habit, same person, you know, same shortcomings. But the Bible tells us we are no longer like that because the old life has been crucified. When Christ died on the cross, we have been crucified. The Apostle Paul realized this truth and this is very important for a start. For us to realize that we have been crucified with Christ, we no longer live, but, but, but what? Christ lives in us. Amen? But Christ lives in us. The life I live, I now live. That means Apostle Paul is still alive, right? When he said that, he was still very much alive. But he said he is no longer, he no longer lives. So it's like a contradiction. But no, he was still very much alive because of Christ. So the life that he lived now in the body, how does he live it? He lived by faith in the Son of God who loved him and gave himself for him. Likewise, we, today we live this life by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. It's a life dependent on God. We are the sheep. We must depend on him. So the life that we live today is not by sight, but by faith. Though we do not see, yet we believe. We believe because we already know we have it. We believe because we know that we have a good shepherd. We believe whatever we need, the good shepherd has provided. It's not he's going to provide, no, but he has provided. Amen? And we have an abundant life. This was preached by a pastor last week. John, uh, or rather not this one, sorry. Okay, we have an abundant life because God did not spare His Son. Now, Jesus came and told us that He is the Good Shepherd. He lays down His life for His sheep. He lays down His life for you and me. So in other words, if He can lay down His life for you and me, there's nothing that He will not give you. What is your concern today? What is your worries today? health, provision, finance, or even relationship. The good shepherd can provide all that. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 32, He who did not spare his own son, that is Jesus, but gave him up for us all, how will he not along with him graciously give us? What? All things. Please get this into our spirit. He will give us all things. You may be praying for something today and you may have been praying for a long time and yet you may not have been seeing it. Like what our sister has shared, just take that step of faith. Yeah? When you take that step of faith, you will see. You know, being a shepherd, he can call the sheep, say, come, I'm bringing you to some green pastures. But let's imagine the sheep doesn't want to move. 
Uh, the sheep don't move. He called, hey, come, I bring you to some green pastures. But he's not moving. So you think the sheep will, will be able to see the green pastures? Of course not. Let's enjoy it, right? So what God requires of us to experience this new life in all its abundance is to take that step of faith. Because we see in the previous verse that our life must be a life of faith. That is the new life. We no longer live by sight, but we live by faith. Amen. And John 15, 16 tells us that the new life in Christ is a fruitful life. It's a fruitful life. The Lord chooses, the Bible says, so that we might go and bear fruit. Not just any fruit. I know, I mean, we know what is fruit, right? Some of the fruit we buy from the market or even pluck out from our own orchard. But after a while, it will go rotten. It won't last. But the scripture tells us the possible route for us. Jesus himself said that he has chosen us to bear fruit that will last. It will not be something that you will waste bearing. It will not be something that when you give, you think that is a waste. But when you, when you give, your li- give your life for Christ, when you give your time, just like our sister who went to ICPC, uh, ICPC Sometimes we think that, oh, we wasted one week. No, you didn't waste one week. You just had the opportunity to bear fruit that lasts. Amen? So whenever you are called for ministry or service, never think that you're wasting your resources, wasting your time, you know, why am I coming to church? I should be at home sleeping, you know? No, you are bearing fruit that will last. Amen? This is the promise of God. This is not something I say. Yeah? We are reading from scriptures. Then we... Okay. Okay, in fact, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, this is what is written, so that we may have a life worthy of the Lord, please Him in every way, and bearing fruit in every good work. That is what fruit is. Good work. Now, how do you produce good work? If you know scriptures, the Bible actually distinguishes good work from dead works. Dead works are works produced by self-effort without depending on God. We think we can do it. So, you know, I think I can preach, so I preach. I never ask the Lord to help me. Yeah? If I think I can, you know, worship lead very good, so I... I do that out of self-effort. The Lord calls that dead works. Every services that we contribute, every ministry that we're involved in, we must involve by depending on Him. Totally. Because we are sheep. You don't, if you ever forget, remember the picture of the sheep. <laughs> That's how you look like. That's how I look like. And God says, we are defenseless. We must depend on Him. We will bear fruit in every good works, growing in the knowledge of God. Amen? Now, I want you to look at this picture. What is it? Huh? <laughs> Anybody can tell me what is this? It's a ship of... Yeah, it's a ship. It's a ship that is full of what? Woo. So full until I think it's time for a cut, right? Now, if you know sheep, sheep produces woo all the time. You know, all the time. Since birth, they will produce woo. In fact, the more you cut those woo off, the more it produces. You cut, 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 then it produces more. And this one is like overflowing, abundance. <laughs> it never stops. It doesn't need someone to tell it to actually produce wool, you know, because it happens naturally. And it, production doesn't stop for any reason. It does not depend on anything. It's always producing, always giving fruit. That's how our life ought to be. Just like the sheep, always produce, non-stop. 
You don't need somebody to tell you to produce fruit, but you continue to produce because it is your natural self. That is your new life. That is my new life. We continue to produce fruit. You can't stop it because God has made us so. Amen? So if you try to stop yourself from producing fruit, I think you'll be leading a very frustrating life as a believer. You'll be having a lot of questions. Why is it not like that? Why is it not like this? You know? Actually, the answer is very simple. Just be your natural self. Just be who God made you to be. Just live out the new life. Continue to bear fruit. Continue to be engaging in good works. Live a life that is depending on God and by faith. Amen. Okay. Somebody is thinking they need a new haircut now. <laughs> the new life in Christ, the Bible also tells us we have a holy life. Holy means we know it means we are set apart. We are set apart from the rest. We are set apart from Him. Just like the story I told you earlier. The sheep knows the shepherd. When the sheep knows the shepherd and recognizes his voice, he's set apart for that shepherd. He will go and suddenly follow another shepherd. You know, they won't. Because once they know the shepherd's voice, they know the shepherd provides them with provisions and protection. I tell you, they will follow. Even another shepherd were to call them, they will not go. They are set apart for that one shepherd. So likewise, the Bible tells us that today, our life is holy unto God. We are set apart only for Jesus, who is our good shepherd. Amen? Hallelujah. Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 9 tells us that we, He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. We are called, we are set apart for His purpose and because of grace. It's not something that we have done. It's not because we are good enough to merit this calling but because He has purpose in our life and it's all by grace. It is all by grace. Today, your life is all by grace, by the grace of God. This grace was given us in Christ before the beginning of time. Oh, that was a very long time ago. The Lord has purposed this in our life even before time began. Time began in Genesis, in the beginning. That's how time began, right? But even before that, God has already purposed in you and me to be set apart for, for Him. In order to achieve that, you know what God did? God sent Jesus. And He has to give His life. It's really a price to be paid. God gave His life, the, the life of His Son so that you and I today can be called sons of the living God. Amen? Last but not, or rather, uh, okay, number six, the Bible tells us we have a godly life. A godly life means a life that is filled with godliness, with the knowledge of God. We are called to a life that is godly. In fact, the Bible tells us in this part of the scripture that His divine purpose has given us everything we need for a godly life. So if you, today you think, oh, you know, I've not been a godly person before, right? I do not know God, or I just got to know Him. So I believe it will take a long time for me to be godly. It may be a process, but the Bible actually promises us that His divine power will give us everything that we need so long as we want to be godly. Of course, if we choose not to follow the shepherd, it is also our choice. The shepherd will not force you. But when we follow the shepherd, we are following a godly life. Amen? 
Romans 5, 17 tells us that we have a reigning life. A life that is, how do I explain this? Reigning means you are like a king. Amen. The new life that God gives you and me is so powerful that when we declare something, we receive. Because God considers us His own. Our words is His words. He has a close relationship with us. So much so that He knows us, we know Him, we recognize His voice, and we are dearly loved. And that's why we can reign. Everything that we face in life is not impossible to God. Any trouble is not impossible to God. All we need to do is to recognize the truth that we can reign in Him. The Bible tells us in Romans 5, 17 that if we have the abundance provision of God's grace and the gift of righteousness, then we can reign. So those are the only conditions. So I want to ask you, do you have God's abundance grace? Do you have His gift of righteousness today? So if you and I have His grace, have His righteousness, you will reign. You will be an overcomer. And you are. In fact, as I, as I think further and meditate further into this uh, lessons of I am, I was asking God, you know, what's the purpose of actually telling us all this? And why did you reveal to God, I mean reveal to Moses, your name as I am? At the time of Moses, probably he couldn't really understand. You know, Moses was, as I said earlier, he was having uh, worries and he was scared because he's going to the Pharaoh. No? He could die, right? Pharaoh could kill him. So he was also afraid for his life. And he was also worried that the Israelites would not believe him. But God told him, you go because my name is I Am. I was also asking God, hey, how come, so how does that help him, right? How does that help Moses? When you say, my name is I Am, that's it. So it works. At that time, I believe Moses couldn't really understand as well. But today, after Jesus came, we can understand. Because most of the time, the way we see ourselves is not how God sees us. God wants you and me today to see ourselves the way He sees us. Amen? So, that's why He says, I am the good shepherd who lays down my life for you, and you have a new life, and that new life is a life that is abundant, a life that is fruitful, yeah? a life that is purposeful, a life that is holy, godly, a life that can reign. And He wants us to see that. That's why in the scripture itself, in 1 John, the Bible tells us that just as He is, so are we in this world. So, the word I am, apart from it being the name of God, God has named Himself as I am so that we can today also look at ourselves, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am the favoured one. I am the beloved of God. I am protected. I am provided. God wants us to understand and realise that as He is, so are we in this world. And this truth is only revealed to us today because of what Jesus has done on the cross. Amen. Even the great prophet Moses could not see it. Even King David could not fully see it. But today, you and I saw it. We now see the real truth, the whole truth, like they say in the court, nothing but the truth. Amen. That's why today, we, know, we should not tell ourselves, oh, I am poor. I am sick. I'm in trouble. No. The Lord do not want you to say that. He wants you to say that as He is the great I am, so are you in Christ today. That you are the righteousness of God in Christ, the favoured one, the beloved of God, the fruitful one, the abundance one. 
So whenever you come across the name of God, I am, remember, you are in Him and He's in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, this is powerful. Amen. Shall we just rise? Hallelujah. Okay, I'm on time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Now, I do not know what you're facing this morning in your own life. You could be saying to yourself many times, Oh, I cannot overcome. I am not good enough. I'm defeated. I'm lack, always lacking. But I want you to change your declaration this morning. Tell yourself, I'm not poor, I'm rich in Christ. If you are sick, you've always been telling yourself, you're sick, no. I am healthy in Jesus. I'm healthy in Jesus. Today, I will receive the healing that God has purposed for me in my life. Whatever sicknesses or pain you have, you may have it been, you know, you, you may be, have, have been having it for a long time. But nothing is impossible with God. He just wants you to recognize and want me to recognize today that as, as Jesus is healthy, so are you in this world. You never find Jesus sick, right? And as Jesus was never poor, He was never in need, even though He carries no money, never carries any cash. But yet He was never poor, never in need. So today, He wants you and I to recognize that you are also rich in Christ. Amen. And if you need a breakthrough, the Lord says today is the day of your salvation. You will break through. You enter the gate and you'll find me. And I am your saviour. And I am not just your shepherd, but your good shepherd. And I have laid down my life for you. And you are most beloved. Hallelujah. I want you just in your few moments of quiet time to make this declaration of truth for your own life. You are in need, do not know but declare that His provision is already here. Amen. Declare that you are healed. You are healed. From the, from the crown of your head to the toe of your feet, you are healthy. Amen. No pain can overcome what the Lord has done for you. What the Good Shepherd has done for you. Today, we have gone through many scriptures. Those are your green pastures. Consume them into your spirit. Say, I'm abundant. Hallelujah. I am living a faith of a life of faith in Christ. Amen. I have a fruitful life. I have a holy life set apart for God. I have a godly life filled with the knowledge of Christ. Last but not least, I have a reigning life. Amen. You are king. The Bible says you are priest and you are king. Amen. You, you have all this because of the exchange life. Jesus, Jesus' life was abundant. His life was holy, godly, fruitful. Whatever He says, goes. Amen. He said, let the storm be still. It was still. Lazarus comes out and there was life. When He said, let the, the loaf, the, the bread, the fish multiply, it multiplied. He is the source of everything. What you are looking at in your own career, in your own business, in your own relationship, those are not the source. Those are the resources. Go to the source. Yes. Jesus is our source. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Receive it right now. I can sense that the Lord wants to give you the desires of your heart this morning. What you desire in your heart, you may be having worries. Oh, where's the provision? I need it. I really need it like right now. God knows the best time. 
He's never too late nor never too early. At the right time, at the appointed time, your provision will come. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Father. Father, we want to thank you. Father. Oh, let's worship you. Hallelujah. A good shepherd cares for you. A good shepherd knows you. A good shepherd loves you. The good shepherd laid down his life for you so that you can now take up his life and live as God has purpose for you. Amen. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Say, Lord, I follow you. I follow you as my good shepherd who laid down your life for me. I thank you for the new life that is in me right now, this moment. The eternal life that you give to me. Oh God, help us to release faith and to receive from you this morning. Oh Lord, I pray that all our life, all your children here this morning would know you even more. We want to know you more. We have the desire to know you every day and be able to discern, to recognize your voice as their good shepherd. Because you have promised to us, each and every one of us, that new life, the life that is fruitful, the life that is abundant, the life that is godly, the life that is holy, the life that depends on you, the life that is filled with faith, the reigning life. Oh Lord, we thank you that all this promises is ours in Christ. We lack nothing. As, the, as King David said, we lack nothing. We lack nothing. We lack nothing, church. God has given everything to you. The Bible says, if God gave His Son and did not spare it, there is nothing lacking in your life. Do not look at the lack, but look at the source of all your provision. Jesus is that source. Amen. Look at Him this morning. Lord, thank you, Jesus. If you have provided your Son, O oh God, you will not, you will not, not answer any of our prayers. We know, Lord, you will provide everything. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Pray, Lord, that we will recognize your voice. We will always follow the shepherd to green pastures and still waters. And though we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yet, yet, Lord, we fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. Oh Lord, we thank you for your anointing. That you prepare a table in the presence of our enemy. We can feast even though our enemy is near us, but we can still feast. Because God protects us. Amen. Hallelujah. Surely, the Bible says surely means for sure, for certain, 100%. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Amen. Hallelujah.